no way are you kidding really am i really on time today i can't believe it i'm not late <laughs> hi everybody welcome here we go again it is english addict live from the birthplace of the english language that is of course england I did something different today I decided to get up one hour earlier than normal so I gave myself an extra hour to prepare my lesson and can I just say here is a great idea if you always find yourself rushing around in the morning get out of bed one hour earlier than you normally do and I tell you your day goes much better <laughs> So I was determined today. I was so determined to actually be here on time because during the past few live streams, I have been a little bit late. I have been slightly tardy. Oh, I like that word tardy. If you are tardy, it means you are late. You didn't arrive when you should have. You were tardy. So today I was determined, so determined to be here on time. I actually got out of bed one hour earlier than I normally do. So since 7.30 this morning, I've been busy preparing today's live stream. So I really hope you enjoy it. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Are you happy? I really hope you are happy today because, well, <laughs> a couple of things actually. One, the weather isn't too bad. At least today here in the UK, it isn't raining. However, it is quite windy. We, we've had a lot of wind and apparently certain parts of the UK are going to get snow today sadly there there will be no snow here unfortunately so i'm sorry about that there won't be any snow here there is however lots of wind no rain at the moment so i'm very pleased to to see that there is no, no rain for a change isn't that nice you can see the, the the flowers on the trees are now starting to come out. Isn't that great? I have to be honest with you. I feel very happy to see the color of spring. And in my garden at the moment, there are some daffodils slowly coming into bloom. I kid you not, there are actually daffodils starting to open already and we are still in February. So spring is just around the corner. I must be honest, I am feeling very excited. <laughs> very. I Oh, I'm anticipating the arrival of spring. I like that word anticipate. If you anticipate, it means you are ready you are prepared maybe you can't wait for that thing to arrive so i am anticipating the arrival of spring i really can't wait so the weekend is just around the corner i hope you have had a good week because today it's friday Come on, Mr. Duncan, get on with it. <laughs> I get a lot of people complaining. They say, come on, Mr. Duncan, get on with it. Get a move on. Hurry up. Say something. Teach some English. For goodness sake, 
for those who are wondering yes my name is mr. Duncan and I teach English right here on YouTube and I've been doing that for a very long time in fact this is my 14th year on YouTube teaching English and don't forget you can catch me every Sunday Wednesday and Friday 2 p.m. UK time check the time difference where you are so you will never miss another one of my live streams for those who are wondering about the captions did you know that you can actually have live captions on my live stream so if you are watching now live you can actually get live captions all you have to do is press that button C on your keyboard there it is the letter C on your keyboard and then as if by magic you will get the live captions also later on after my lesson has been recorded on YouTube there will be captions or subtitles on there as well so if you are if you are missing the captions all you have to do is press C on your keyboard so now I hope you will be able to join in and chat live and follow the live stream as well as I speak to you hello to the live chat oh it's so nice to see the live chat I am quite relieved to say the least because I don't know if you've heard but there is something whirring through space have you heard about it have you heard about the big asteroid well have you heard about it <laughs> it's been all over the news we will talk about that in a few moments time however more important things yes we have the live chat hello to the live chat nice to see you here as well hello to mog mog guess what mog mog you are first on today's live chat Well done, Mog Mog. You are first on today's live chat. Also, hello to Amit. Hello, Amit. Also, Cecilia Maroots. Also, we have Eric. Hello, Eric. Nice to see you here today. Also, Sally Maria. <laughs> Maria, I'm saying hello to Maria. Hello also to Swali Swahili. Hello to you. Do you know the Swahili language? I've heard of it. However, unfortunately, I don't speak it. Hello also to Ab Abdel Gadur. Hello to you as well. Nice to see you here as well today. If it is your first time, don't forget to tell me. Say, Mr. Duncan, it's my first time here. Hello, Rosa, Anna, Zuzika, Hiba, also Pedro. <laughs> Pedro Belmont is here today. But I have a strange feeling he is not going to stay. Hello also to Marina, Ciro, or Chiro, Jean. Hello, Jean Bear. Nice to see you here as well so many people already on the live chat it is friday the weekend is coming do you have something exciting planned for this weekend we are talking about a lot of things today so many things to get through on today's live chat and also the live stream as well for example we will we will be talking about repeating things now when you learn something quite often you will have to do the same thing again and again and again sometimes you will have to repeat the same thing many times and the same is true if you are learning English 
so if you want to improve your spoken english if you want to get those words to stay in your brain then i would say that repeating things is a very useful exercise a lot of people don't like doing it a lot of people complain they say mr duncan we don't like repeating things we don't want to keep saying the same words again and again and again but you don't have to worry about it can i just say in your daily life when you wake up in the morning every day you pretty much do the same thing you repeat the same actions every day yet you never complain you ladies watching out there in the morning you you make your face look beautiful you go to the mirror you put your lipstick on you put your rouge and your foundation on your face maybe some men do the same thing who knows it is 2020 after all and you spend a lot of time making yourself look beautiful every day well that is a repeated action you are doing that every day so it is something that you always do or something you repeat so learning needn't be a problem don't worry about repeating things if you are learning a second language repetition or repeating things is a great way to learn a new language trust me so for example maybe you are learning to drive a car well you don't jump in the car just before your test without having any practice so if you are driving a car if you want to drive a car if you want to take your lesson or test you have to repeat the same things again and again and again so is it useful to repeat things whilst learning english well is it what do you think do you think repeating things is useful for learning english that is one of the questions also today we're going to look at big and small words and phrases so words that can be used to describe big things and small things there are many words and i have a feeling that some of the words that i will use today you've never heard of before i think so that's what i that's what i think so stick around for that as i mentioned a few moments ago <laughs> there is or there was a giant asteroid flying around the earth did you see it in fact i think it's coming back did you see that i think the asteroid is still flying around to be honest in my studio somewhere <laughs> so this particular asteroid is called apophis apophis apparently apophis was the god of chaos so we are going back a long time to the early days of religion when there were many many gods for all sorts of things so apophis was actually the god of chaos and that is the name of the giant asteroid that is flying around at the moment near planet earth that's where we live i don't like the sound of that to be honest fortunately it has passed by however after careful examination on the internet today i noticed that there was a news story all about asteroid apophis apparently asteroid apophis is heading right for earth now it has just passed by earth however it will come back once again on friday the 13th of april 2029 so nine years from now apparently the asteroid 
that is just past the Earth will hit the Earth. That's what some people think anyway. According to a Christian preacher who has shockingly predicted the end of the world on Friday the 13th of April 2029. So from that, it would appear we only have nine more years. Oh, dear. <laughs> and you thought Brexit was bad. <laughs> That's nothing compared to a large piece of rock hitting the earth. I don't believe it, to be honest. How many times? How many times have we been told in the past that the earth is coming to the end of its life? How many times asteroids, Judgment Day, invasions by little green men. And yet still we are here. We are still here. So what do you think? <laughs> do you believe in these days of apocalypse? Oh, I like that word. Apocalypse. Ooh, apocalypse. If there is an, an apocalypse, it means it is the end of the planet or end of time when there is mass destruction or maybe something is destroyed the apocalypse so something else to think about today how do you tell someone to be quiet maybe you are sitting in a room and you want a bit of peace and quiet however the person next to you keeps talking they won't shut up how many ways are there to say be quiet well i'm going to show you right now how many ways there are because there are many here's an interesting way of telling someone to be quiet you can say shush i will do it again shush shush you can say shush to someone and that is a direct blunt way of telling someone to be quiet you might find it a little rude you might find it a little offensive however it is a very good way of getting someone to be quiet you say shush shush another way well of course you can simply say be quiet. Be quiet. Stop talking. Stop making a noise. You are too noisy. Stop chatting about nothing. Please be quiet. You can also say, shut up. Shut up. I know it's a bit rude. Before anyone complains, Mr. Duncan, if you tell someone to shut up, they might be offended. However, it is a very good way of telling someone to be quiet. You tell them to shut up. <laughs> oh, I like this one. This is a good one. Put a sock in it. Put a sock in it. Please stop talking. You are talking too much for too long. For goodness sake, please put a sock in it. Give it a rest. Please give it a rest. I am so tired of hearing your voice chattering away all the time. Please give it a rest. Just give it a rest. Please be quiet. Here's another one. <laughs> button it. Button it. You might tell a person to button it. It means you want them to stop talking. You want them to stop chattering. You tell them to button it. Maybe they are saying too much. Maybe they are about to give a secret away. Maybe they are spreading some gossip. You might have to tell them to button it. Button it. Button your mouth. It means to keep your mouth shut <laughs> here's another one. Oh, i like this one <laughs> shut your face shut 
your face you might tell someone to shut their face if they are talking too much maybe you will say mr duncan you always talk you talk too much for too long please mr duncan shut your face shut your face <laughs> yes it might be a little rude although it is used quite often i'll be honest with you <gasps> zip it zip zip it when we want a person to be quiet to stop talking or to be silent you might tell them to zip it zip it close your mouth stay quiet don't say anything zip it mr duncan for goodness sake can you please zip it okay finally oh i think this might be one of my favorites if you want to tell someone to be quiet to stop chattering and talking all the time you can just tell them to shut their cake hole <laughs> i like that one we often use this one in british english by the way so if you want to tell a british person to be quiet a british person who is talking too much you can say shut your cake hole for goodness sake mr duncan shut your cake hole shut your cake hole i like that one <laughs> so there you can see many ways of telling another person to be quiet we have a little contest today a little game now as you know over the past few days we've had a lot of bad weather here in the uk and something in my garden has been destroyed by the wind so i'm going to show you the thing that has been destroyed but what i want you to tell me is what was it what was it before the wind came along and destroyed it so there is a beautiful thing that was in my garden and it was in one piece but then storm dennis came along and destroyed it so here is today's little quiz something to keep your brain guessing and warm <laughs> what is this object or should i say what was it there it is what was that what was it does anyone know what was it so it is something that was in my garden but unfortunately the recent storm destroyed it the strong winds smashed it to pieces so what was that mystery item what did it do in my garden it actually served a very useful purpose hello once again to the live chat hello sweetness hello to you sweetness nice to see you here today how are you doing nice to see you here thank you very much also broken boy is back hello broken boy i haven't seen you for a while i don't think you were you were here last week hello also to alif hello alif watching in i think alif is in pakistan Luis Mendez is here a big super duper bonjour to Luis Mendez as well general study is here also we have Tuong hello Tuong Nguyen watching in Vietnam can I say a big hello to all of my new subscribers and followers who are watching in Vietnam thank you also to Alex D alex d who is a well-known english teacher in vietnam hello to you as well quilbis is here nice to see you here as well if, you, if it is your first time please let me know please tell me helena says i appreciate this group and also the atmosphere too yes it is a little bit like a big classroom so this particular classroom is not just one room it is actually many rooms many places 
and many people all around the world sharing their love of English hello to Noemi hello Noemi is it the drinking dish no it isn't the mystery object what was it so it is something that was smashed in my garden last week during the serious storm and it was it really was broken by the wind <laughs> that's how strong the wind was last week it was it was so strong it was the, the wind was so strong last week hello also to Delawa where are you watching I'm always interested to find out where you are is it the cover for a lamp good guess I like that guess thank you Maria it is not a lamp or the cover for a lamp so it isn't a lampshade definitely not it is not one of those hello also to Alan Gear who says it looks like a beehive interesting guess I like that yes it does look a little bit like a beehive let's have another look there it is so what was it something that was in my garden a very useful thing but now unfortunately it is broken it has been destroyed by the strong wind hello also shall I say hello to oh hello to Najim hello Najim thank you very much for joining me today lots of new people joining I've noticed over the past few days during my live streams there are a lot of new people watching which is always great to see I have lots of video lessons on my YouTube channel I also now have a website as well and there it is the website address you can actually go to that website and find lots of interesting things also you will find all of the playlists as well so there are lots of menus on my website you can find my lesson playlists there are hundreds of lessons available on my YouTube channel talking of which oh talking of which we are now going to take a look at one of my lessons and this is an excerpt from one of my full English lessons and this was a series of lessons where I talk about lots of different topics and subjects concerning the English language and yes I have received quite a few people asking messages from lots of people asking Mr Duncan will there be some more full English lessons well my answer to that is as soon as the weather gets better the answer is yes I don't know about you but I love hearing gossip to gossip is to talk freely about another person's life the things you have heard about another person regardless of whether you know it to be true or not the word gossip can be used as a noun or a verb a person who gossips is a gossip they like to gossip about other people the things said are the gossip you can hear gossip from others gossip can be described as hearsay tittle tattle rumor scandal you will often find that very small towns and villages will have local gossip a person who seems to know all about what is happening in the surrounding area is the local gossip be careful what you say to her she is the local gossip around here so gossip can be the person spreading the rumors or the thing that is being said 
some people like to read about celebrity gossip on the internet or in magazines a gossipy person will often be reluctant to tell you where they got the gossip from if you ask them where they got the information they will often reply with a little bird told me it's time now to take a look at another buzzword a buzzword is a word or phrase that is used during a certain period of time today's buzzword is redact the word redact means to conceal or hide information which may be unsuitable or sensitive to conceal parts of printed text that is deemed private or classified is to redact. To edit a report before publication is to redact. The redacted Secret Service report was published yesterday. To censor or obscure something so it cannot be seen is to redact. The leaked memo did not reveal much due to it being heavily redacted. The person doing the redacting is the redactor. The 20 page report was redacted to just a few paragraphs. To redact is to edit, censor, cover, expurgate, suppress, to hide something so it cannot be seen is to redact. Have you ever seen a prefix in an English word? Well, in fact, there are lots of them. In fact, there might be more than you realise. There are many occurrences of prefixes in English words that serve to dramatically change the meaning of the original word. For example, the prefix pseudo before a word denotes something as fake or artificial. For example, Pseudo-science refers to a practice of science that has not been accredited or qualified. It is seen as untrue and meritless. Another good example is the prefix quasi, which defines something that appears real, but is in fact the opposite. For example, quasi-political. An action appears to be stating an opinion, but in fact is doing the opposite. You might say that these two examples have similar meanings. Another example of a prefix is retro. This particular prefix means to go backwards or regress. For example, retro migration, which means return to your place of origin. Migration back to a place of origin. The prefix un before a word denotes an opposite meaning, such as unapologetic. There are many prefixes in the English language, some of which take the form of combining words such as anti, auto and omni. How many prefix words do you know? And we are back. I hope you enjoyed that. An excerpt from one of my many English lessons which are available on my YouTube channel and also my new website as well. <laughs> it's a Friday, I hope. I really hope you've had a good week. I really hope so. So did you see the giant asteroid that went past the Earth? Apparently it's going to come back in 2029 and it's going to squash us all like ants, apparently. <laughs> Personally, I don't believe it, to be honest with you. So what about you when you are learning, when you are learning something intensely? Do you repeat things? Is it useful? to repeat things whilst learning English. What do you think? Now, I, from my own opinion, I think learning anything requires repetition. 
whatever it is whether, whether you are learning to drive a car or ride a bike or maybe a certain skill maybe you are going to be a bricklayer you have to learn how to do it you have to do things many many times before you get it right and the same is true with English so you will find that if you are learning English repeating things is part of doing it in fact I would strongly advise anyone to do it even though sometimes it feels a little boring but repeating things is a great way to get those words and also the grammar into your brain just like learning to drive a car so as you do it you are remembering the things you are doing and the same thing applies to English if you are learning English then you repeat the words again and again and as you do it you will find that the words and the rules start to stick in your brain it's incredible but that's why the brain is such an amazing thing because it is possible to grow your brain physically by learning new things and repeating things is a good way of getting those brain cells to generate inside your head so it's true I'm not joking there if you are learning English or anything repeating the same things again and again might seem boring it might not be interesting however it is very effective never underestimate the power of repeating things trust me hello to Alan gear hello also to Anna it seems that many prefixes come from Latin or Old Greek many English words come from ancient Greek or Latin uh, Germanic also Italian French so you will find that the English language over the past thousand years has been influenced in many many ways not just from one place but many things many things indeed have all influenced the English language and also how we use it in Greece we say that repeating is the mother of all knowledge yes I think so thank you Theo I remember when I was teaching in China quite often I would get some of my students to repeat certain sentences or to read things out another good thing that you can do to help words and phrases stick in your brain is to write so when you write something down you are using your brain in a very particular way a very special way in fact so when you write something down maybe you have a book in front of you and you copy some of the sentences or some of the words that are written in the book can I just say that is a great way of learning new words and a good way of getting those words to stay in your head so yes these things do work however sometimes it can seem a little tedious a little boring perhaps but it is a very valuable part of learning the English language and well anything to be honest anything at all hello to T Trin watching in Vietnam I know I have a lot of people watching in Vietnam many new Vietnamese students have joined me over the past few days so a big hello to Vietnam and also a big hello to Alex D as well I wonder if Alex D is ever going to say hello to me I wonder Ooh. hello also to Sally apparently it is still afternoon in Sally's location here it is coming up to it is now 17 maybe 18 minutes away from three o'clock in the afternoon it's a lovely day here not too bad I can't complain about the weather there is the view from my studio window you can see there is a magpie can you see the magpie sitting in the tree 
I must be honest with you I find magpies can be very annoying birds they often raid the, the nests of other birds they eat the chicks and also the eggs so I find magpies can be quite annoying sometimes so there is the view in my garden at the moment a little bit of spring color is also beginning to appear finally I can't begin to tell you how glad I am to see spring is on the way Whew, I can't wait hello Carlos good morning Mr Duncan such a pleasure to talk with you again hello Carlos where are you watching at the moment Emanuela is here as well yes if you are learning new words if you are trying to remember new words and phrases repeating things is a great way to learn those things so yes I think so I, I think there is a lot of use when it comes to repeating things words phrases maybe things that you have, have heard somewhere else perhaps you can listen to me and repeat what I say as well so you, perhaps you are listening to my voice and reading the captions and perhaps you are repeating what I say as I speak to you right now you never know hello also to George hello George nice to see you here today also we have T Trin hello T Trin I believe you are also watching in Vietnam lots of people here today we are talking about quite a few things today we are going to have a look at words and phrases used to describe things that are big and small there are more words than you realize you might not actually realize that there are so many words around that can be used to describe big and small more than you realize hello to the live chat again I'm not going to forget you don't worry Kim Dogan says I am trying to learn etymology so the origins of words where words come from where English words came from and how they originated did you know that there are many words in English that have no origin they, they magically appeared over time so there are many words in English that have no origin we actually don't know how or where the words came from oh Belarusia I was wondering where you were I need some advice Belarusia because I know that part of your work involves looking after people's teeth I've got toothache in my back tooth for the past two or three days I don't know why but it suddenly happened it suddenly started hurting at the back of my mouth and I don't want to go to the dentist because I'm scared because my dentist that the dentist that I normally see has left and it really has upset me I can't begin to tell you how upset I feel by my dentist leaving so there, there is a new dentist now in much Wenlock but I don't want to go to him because he's different he's not the same one I want Jonathan Jonathan was a great dentist he he used to talk to me and make me feel relaxed but now there is a new dentist and I'm really scared that he will hurt me when he starts poking around in my mouth so yes I do feel a little upset that I can't go to see my usual dentist because he's gone now he's gone somewhere else so there is a different dentist and to be honest with you it has put me off going there because I, you get used to the same person don't you and if the person is nice and makes you feel relaxed then you want to go back again and again you don't mind it however now I have toothache one of my back teeth is aching and I don't know why 
I don't know why it's just started to happen over the past two or three days very strange a lot of people saying Mr Duncan perhaps you have a wisdom tooth coming through yes as you get older you can have teeth that come through much later in life I don't think it is a wisdom tooth I don't think so I it's one of my back teeth but I think perhaps there is there is a little bit of decay or maybe something along the gum line so where your gums meet the teeth I think maybe there is a little bit of sensitivity something is getting in there and catching the nerve but it's pretty painful it's not hurting at the moment but it always hurts when I drink something hot or cold so for example if I have this water if I drink some of this water then my tooth will start aching so I don't know why but the last two or three days it suddenly started aching and it's 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 right at the back of my mouth and it's very very annoying not to mention painful but I don't really want to go to the dentist because now there is a new dentist and he is unknown to me I don't know who he is I got so used to having the same dentist <laughs> I don't know why it's affected me so much but now I feel very nervous about going back to the dentist hello Helena you can fly across to Belarusia she will help I wish I wish I could do that I'm not joking <laughs> that's how serious I'm taking all of this I'm taking this very seriously to be honest because my tooth is hurt hurting it's painful and I don't like pain to be honest Belarusia says my advice is that you should go to the new dentist but but he, he might hurt me he might be very rough he might stick all of the needles and the sharp things and the drill into my gums and hurt me so I don't know why I don't know what's happening here maybe it's something going on in my brain I don't know <laughs> maybe it isn't toothache perhaps it's brain ache maybe Rolfi is there a phobia related to not wanting to go to the dentist I suppose there is I suppose I'm sure Belarusia knows is there a fear of going to the dentist I, I want to say dentophobia or author orthodont orthodontophobia orthodent orthodental phobia something like that maybe yes so what do we call the fear of dentists I'm sure someone out there in YouTube land will let me know I'm intrigued to know Mr Duncan you should wash your mouth out with sea salt it will help yes I've tried using lots of things to rinse my mouth and of course I clean my teeth all the time so I clean my teeth every day three times after I've eaten so I don't know what's happened I think maybe maybe something has gone into the gum and it's made it very sensitive so I don't know but I don't want to go to the dentist I don't please don't make me go to the dentist <laughs> Mog Mog says is there a dentist here yes Belarusia Belarusia is a dentist mm -hmm. <laughs> that is why she is saying that I should go to the dentist even though I don't really want to I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> why is my tooth hurting <laughs> if you don't go to your dentist then you oh if you don't want to lose your teeth or tooth then you should go to see your dentist thank you once again Belarusia yes but I, I don't like I don't like going to the dentist for the past six years I've been going to the dentist here in much Wenlock and there's a nice guy there called Jonathan and and he's really really pleasant and friendly and he makes me feel relaxed but he's gone and now it's someone else so that's what's happening in my life 
i bet you're really interested to know that talking of my life in my garden something has broken here it is <laughs> here is the thing that was broken last week by the ferocious storms we've had some terrible storms over the past few days here in the uk so what was this what was it what was it used for i've had quite a few answers it is not a lampshade it is not a drinking bowl it has a a very special use in my garden but what is the use what was it i will give you the answer later on don't forget i am back with you on sunday from 2 p.m mr steve will not be here in fact he's been away all week he's he's dashing around at the moment doing all sorts of things steve so there will be no mr steve on sunday but please join me because there will be lots of other things taking place i might even show some video clips of mr steve being very silly so please join me on sunday i hope meanwhile we are talking about quite a few things we are talking about the uses of big and small so words and phrases connected to big and small so first of all i am going to show you some words connected to big and there are many there are many ways of describing something that is big for example well first of all we have the most obvious one the most obvious one is big so something that is big also we can use the word big to mean important as well so big doesn't just mean something that is large sized it also means something that is important maybe you have a big meeting next week so when we say big there might be many people there but also it means that the thing in question is very important maybe you have a big speech to give at the conference so the big speech means that you are doing it in front of lots of people and there will be a lot of pressure on you and also you will have to do it professionally as well you can't make any mistakes so we can use the word big to mean large something that has a lot of mass but also something that is very important you have a big dinner date this weekend ah maybe you are going on a big date you are meeting someone special for dinner Ooh. large yes we can say large to mean something that is oversized something large something oversized a large meal you might eat a lot of food you might notice when you go to a fast food restaurant such as mcdonald's or kfc or burger king or if you're in china mac and Lai, which is fake mcdonald's <laughs> not really i'm joking so <laughs> they will often ask if you want to go large with your meal which means do you want a large portion so they will give you more food and of course you will pay a little extra as well so do you want to go large do you want to have a large portion to be honest with you i always get confused when i go into a fast food restaurant because i always think that medium is small and then large is medium because they often say regular don't they they don't say small they say regular would you like a regular happy meal or would you like to go large regular so i suppose when they say regular they actually mean small that's what i think anyway something is really big you are describing something dramatically you are saying i saw a dog the other day walking across the field behind my house it was really big it was really big so you are 
emphasizing the fact that the dog was very large huge I like this one if something is huge it means it is large it is oversized it is something that is very big huge maybe you are organizing a big dinner party for lots of friends maybe there is a special birthday party that you are arranging you might describe it as a huge party we are going to hold a huge party next weekend for all of my friends so something that is huge is large something that is big something that is large and maybe something that has a lot of mass such as I don't know for example maybe an asteroid like that one <laughs> for example thank you very much for your messages today by the way a lot of people giving me advice about my teeth thank you very much for that here we go something that is big can be described as massive massive something that is big maybe there is a fashion or a tr or a trend maybe there is a certain style of music that is very popular we can say that particular thing is massive it is massive it is very popular it is very trendy something that a lot of people are doing something that a lot of people are listening to it's massive that song has been a massive hit in many countries massive big popular Here's another one. Oh, gigantic. Something that is gigantic. Maybe in your garden there is a plant that is growing. And for the past few years, it has been getting larger and larger. And now it is gigantic. There is actually a tree in my garden that we planted in 2014. And now. It is gigantic. It is really big. So something that is gigantic, it is large, a gigantic tree, something that is big in size, colossal. Oh, I like this one. Again, something that has a lot of mass. It is big. It is large. It is colossal. So, for example, once again, you might describe that big asteroid that came past the Earth a few hours ago. <laughs> you might say that that is colossal, big. Perhaps you are running a business and maybe you lose a lot of money. We might say that you have colossal loss. You have huge loss because you've lost a lot of money. Your business has been losing money colossal Pedro is going see you later Pedro Pedro has something to do immense is another word that we can use something that is immense maybe something large or maybe something that is important maybe something that is causing you a lot of heartache or pressure it is creating immense stress, large, a large amount of something. So maybe you say, oh, I had a terrible day at work today. My boss is putting me under immense pressure, immense, lots of pressure. Now this. <laughs> I'm sure some people will recognize this word. It is a large animal that no longer exists called a mammoth. It looks a little bit like an elephant. Instead, it has lots of fur mammoth. It's a huge or it was a huge animal. So if something is mammoth, it means it is gr big, large, great mammoth. 
maybe you have to do something for your boss and maybe it's something that is very complex and it will take you many days to do you can say that it is a mammoth task my boss has given me a mammoth task to carry out mammoth something that's huge large overwhelming mammoth here's another one oh this is a good one I like this one when we talk about maybe a large area or a large space maybe you you are standing in a big field you might say that the area around you is vast vast a large amount of something vast perhaps you have won the lottery maybe you've won some money on the lottery we can say that you have won a vast amount of money vast large a huge amount if you look up into the sky at night you will realize that the universe is vast the universe goes on forever and ever and ever and ever it's vast so we talk about space being vast and almost endless almost endless hello to Emmanuel again hello Emmanuel nice to see you here here's a good one we were talking about things going on forever when we are talking about the size well here's a good one infinite infinite means something that is never ending it goes on forever and ever so when we say that something is infinite it means it is so large it is so big that it goes on forever and ever and ever some people might say that space the universe is infinite maybe it just carries on forever and ever so if you were lucky enough to go into space <laughs> maybe with some futuristic space engineering that we can that can take you millions and millions of miles you might discover that the universe is infinite it goes on forever and ever and ever hello Bula hello Bula nice to see you here today welcome to my lovely live stream right here on YouTube nice to see you here today thank you very much for joining me something that is infinite goes on forever something that cannot be measured can be described as immeasurable something that is immeasurable is something that cannot be measured so maybe there is a distance maybe a length or height maybe something that is so hard to measure because it's so big huge massive it is immeasurable I suppose you might describe the planet that we're standing on now so the amount of time that is past I suppose can be described as immeasurable we can guess we can use science to work out roughly how old the earth is but some people might say that the the age of the earth is immeasurable very interesting words here are some fun words now to mean big I like this one whopper whopper maybe something is so big you describe it as a whopper something big perhaps you go to a certain burger shop fast food mm. maybe you have a large beef burger so you don't have a small beef burger you have a large beef burger and they might call that beef burger a whopper because it's big so the word whopper 
can mean something large, something big, something that is oversized. It is much larger than it normally is. Something is a whopper. We can also use this word to describe something that is untrue. So you might describe a lie or something that has been said dishonestly as a whopper. Maybe your friend told you a lie. You might describe it as a whopper. He told me a huge whopper. It was a whopper, a massive lie. So there are many ways of using <laughs> that particular word. Here's another one. Oh, I like this one. Biggie, a biggie. If something is described as a biggie, it means it's big, it's large. It is a fun way of saying big. So maybe maybe a friend asks you to do a favor for them. Could you do me a favor? I'm sorry. It is a biggie, a biggie, something large, something that it's oversized can be described as a biggie, something that is big. And finally, for the large words, we have humongous. Oh, I like this word. So maybe you are describing something that is really big, so large it can't be measured. Something big. Maybe your friend has just bought a new house and it's really big. You might describe it as having humongous space or humongous rooms. They are so large, so large, very big. Thank you very much for appreciating those words. That's very kind of you to say so. It's not lovely. Thank you very much. Hello also to Emmanuel, who says endless. Yes, I suppose so. We could use the word endless to describe something that goes on forever and ever. So if we talk about endless, it means, well, maybe the experience or the sensation of something going on for a very long time. Perhaps you've been listening to my voice today. Perhaps you think that my talking <laughs> is endless. Mr. Duncan, you talk for such a long time. Your your lesson feels endless. It feels as if it's going on forever. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Cecilia has described me as a biggie. Mr. Duncan, you are a biggie when it comes to teaching English. Thank you, Cecilia. That's very kind of you. Hailey Quang says giant. Yes, a big thing can be described as giant. Maybe your local shop is having a sale. They are selling lots of items at a very good price. They might describe their sale as giant. We are having a giant sale this weekend. Come along to our giant sale this weekend. You could also describe a very tall person as a giant, although sometimes they might be offended by that. But a person who is very tall, very maybe slim and tall can be described as a giant, a giant. Or maybe a person who has done something very impressive over the years. You might say that a particular actor or actress is a giant of the film industry. They are big. They are a big personality. They are very well known. Yes, you can also use. Oh, there's a good word. Extensive. Yes, extensive. Something that can be larger or longer. Time, the shape or size of something extensive. Thank you very much. Rashib, Rash, Rashab. Thank you very much, Rashab Sati. 
for your suggestion thank you very much so we've had big and now let's have a look at small shall we there are quite a few words to describe small well the most obvious is small something that is not large something that is not too big maybe you have a dog and maybe your dog is not a big dog you might describe your dog as a small dog perhaps you have a chihuahua or i don't know a little poodle and the poodle isn't very big it is a small dog it is not big so yes we can use small to mean the size of something also maybe something that is not important or insignificant so maybe something that is not important something that is not serious a small thing a small event a small injury so maybe you injure yourself maybe you cut your hand or your finger but it isn't very serious it isn't serious you don't have to go to the hospital it is just a small cut it is not serious something that is not serious if we want to emphasize the size of something especially if it is small we can say that it is very small very small <laughs> i know what you're thinking i i know exactly what you're thinking at the moment mr duncan can you please give us a sentence using very small think of your own i'm sure you you can do that think of your own here's another one little something that is little little Ah, <sighs> something that is not large something that may be smaller than it usually is <sighs> so something that is normally large but this particular thing is little you can describe time so a brief moment of time can be described as little can i can i have a word with you well i only have a little time so I only have a little time to spare. So that means I only have a short period of time to spare. I can't talk with you for very long. I only have a little time. So a short period of time or maybe something that is not very long or very large can be described as little. Some people say that I have a little nose my nose is little <laughs> hello to Hailey Kwang who knows exactly what I mean by small sized very small another word <laughs> tiny something is tiny maybe you see an insect on your window but it isn't a big insect like a moth or a worm it is something very small a tiny insect maybe an ant so you might describe an ant as tiny something very small something that is almost invisible something that is almost invisible to the eye is tiny tiny not big very small tiny another one diminutive something that is diminutive is something that is not very big so when we say diminutive it means it is smaller than it normally is or maybe the height is not as much as it normally is so you might describe a person who is very short as diminutive something that is small something that is not very tall diminutive it's not an easy one to say that so i will say it again diminutive D 
diminutive. Here's another one. Now I know that this word looks like minute, but in fact, it is minute. Something that is very small, something that is very tiny, can be described as minute. Minute. Maybe a person is explaining something to you and they are going into every detail, all of the small details. You can say that they are giving you all of the minute details. So the very tiny things, the very small things, you might even say that something that is minute cannot be seen because it's so small. So a very small thing can be described as minute. Thank you. Sweetness says diminutive. Yes, a diminutive thing is something that is very small. Ooh, now this is an interesting word for two reasons. One, many people spell this word incorrectly. So there you can see the word miniature miniature something that is a small version of something else which is large so something that is miniature is something that is small or a small version of something else that is large so maybe you have a miniature house maybe a model of a house or maybe a model of a steam train. We can say that the steam train is miniature, miniature. That means it is a small version of something else that is very large, miniature. So you might have a miniature railway track. So I used to have one of those. It's true. I used to have a miniature railway track. I used to play with a little steam train and it would go around and around on the tracks. A miniature steam train, a miniature model, something that is a small version of something else that is normally large. Oh, here's another one. Has anyone seen Austin Powers? Austin Powers. One billion dollars. Mini. The word mini means small. So maybe something that is smaller than it normally is. Maybe a small version of something. Once again, very similar to miniature. In fact, mini is the short version of miniature. So when we say mini, we are actually saying miniature, miniature, something that is a small version of something else. During the 1960s, women would wear mini skirts. Ooh. So they were skirts that were much smaller or shorter than the normal skirt. You could see a lot of their legs. So the mini skirt in the 1960s was very popular. Lots of ladies wore mini skirts. They were very short and they were quite appreciated by the men. Let's just say. I don't understand miniature, says Abdul. If something is miniature, it means it is smaller than a large item. So maybe you can have a miniature car, maybe a model of a car or a toy car. So a car that looks like a full size car, but it's a small version of it. It is mini, tiny, small. It is a small version of something. Eric says there is a car called the mini. Yes, a British car. I'm not sure if it's made by Britain anymore. I think it's owned by another company. But yes, the Mini is a type of car. It is a very small, convenient car. 
hello Noemi hello Noemi nice to see you here my son has a miniature collection of cars yes pretty good I like it I like it a lot thanks a lot for your company today I have some more words to show you in a moment some more words coming your way however if you want to get in touch with me you are more than welcome to do so don't forget you can write to my email address you can also follow me on Facebook and if you like what you see you can also send a lovely donation just having a drink of water but the problem is I have to be careful I have to be very careful because if I drink the water too quickly then my my tooth will hurt I've got toothache today my tooth is hurting and I don't know why we are looking at words connected to big and small there are many ways of describing big things and small things here is another one something that is very small can be described as minuscule minuscule I like that word so something that is very small very tiny can be described as minuscule a very small thing it is so small you can't see it with your eyes so something that is minuscule something that is very very small minuscule I like that word I remember many years ago my parents bought a wonderful gift for me something that it was very useful they bought me a microscope and a microscope is a very important thing a very useful thing if you want to look at very small objects maybe you want to look at some bacteria or maybe you want to have a close look at one of your hairs you want to see the root of your hair perhaps you can use a microscope and the things that you look at under a microscope can be described as microscopic so something that is so small so tiny it can't be seen unless you use a microscope so micro means small scope or scopic means view or see so a small view small thing is being looked at so something that is very tiny very small and it can't be seen with the naked eye when we say the naked eye it means without any assistance so something that is microscopic is very very small tiny it can't be seen with the naked eye here's another word that we often use as a prefix when we are talking about small things or something that is smaller than it normally is micro so you might put this before another word microcomputer so a very small computer can be described as a microcomputer I remember growing up in the late 1970s and everyone was talking about microcomputers it was when computers were starting to appear all over the place and they were slowly getting smaller and smaller and smaller and back then they were described as microcomputers that's what we called them a microscopic germ or maybe a microorganism so a very small form of life that can't be seen unless you use a microscope can be described as a microorganism perhaps a virus you can only see the virus if you use a microscope a very powerful microscope so a microorganism a microcomputer 
a micro SD card that you put in your camera or in your mp3 player or maybe in your smartphone so yes so the word micro often comes before another word it is used as a prefix before another word microcomputer a microcosm which is a small expanse in space so micro means something that is small or something that is not easily seen talking of small things talking of tiny things things that are so small they can't be seen unless you look very closely <laughs> something that is atomic or maybe something that is described as an atom so when we talk about atoms they are the very small things in fact they are the smallest things that exist besides the nucleus which is inside an atom so something that is atomic is very small a very small particle can be described as atomic something very small it was also a song by blondie in the late 1970s it was oh here are some fun words that we can use to describe small things a small thing can be described as teeny weeny something that is teeny weeny a teeny weeny dress a teeny weeny dog maybe the dog is very small and very cute and you want to describe it in a fun and happy way you might describe it as teeny weeny you might also describe a child as a teeny weeny so something that is small something that is not very large we can describe as teeny weeny i like that one this next word is especially for all those watching in scotland if you are north of the english border this is just for you something that is we we it is used in scottish to describe small so maybe a wee child or a wee bairn bairn is scottish for child so a scottish person might describe a small child as a wee bairn <laughs> so something teeny weeny something that is wee very small very tiny and this particular word is often used in Scotland to describe something that is small oh I like this one diddy something that is diddy is very tiny something small something that is hard to see or maybe something that is small and cute can be described as diddy diddy there is a rapper called p diddy have you heard of him <laughs> puff daddy but now he's called p diddy i don't know why so please don't ask me oh i like this one this is my this is my last word the last word for small that i'm going to give you today <laughs> teetsy weetsy something that is very small something that is very tiny something that is cute and once again you want to describe it in a fun and happy way something is teensy weensy you have a teensy weensy nose you have teensy weensy curls in your hair teensy weensy I have a feeling that many of you may not have heard of that one before something that is teensy weensy we could also say itsy bitsy as well something that is itsy bitsy is small tiny yes something that is diddy can be described as small tiny or undersized something that is not 
very big thank you very much for your company lots of people here today hello to black gotcha who says the best teacher ever thank you very much that's very kind of you to say so isn't that lovely before i go can i say a special thank you to a couple of people can i say thank you to Mikel in canada and also andre in spain for your lovely kind paypal donations that i've just received so thank you very much to Mikel in canada and also andre in spain for your paypal donations and you are more than welcome to make a donation if you wish all you have to do is go to the address at the bottom of the screen and you can make a donation small or large perhaps you've just won the lottery and you have a couple of million that you don't need <laughs> i know that's not going to happen but thank you once again to Mikel in Canada for your lovely donation and also Andre as well, who is watching in Spain. Before I go, I will give you the answer to today's little quiz. I asked you to tell me what this was. So here is something that it was in my garden. It was in my garden for quite a while. But unfortunately, last week we had a big storm and the wind destroyed this item. However, the question is, what was it? Does anyone know what this was before it was smashed to pieces, before it was broken, before the wind came along to destroy it? What was it? I will give you the answer in a couple of moments the answer is coming <laughs> Cecilia thank you very much for your lovely messages yes I will be going I will be with you for a few more minutes so don't worry don't go away what was it I had quite a few answers someone said is it your garden lamp no is it a water bowl for the birds no however it is connected to the birds it is connected to the birds in my garden okay i will now put you out of your misery i will now take away the mystery of this strange looking item the answer is coming right <laughs> now it is or it was a squirrel defender a squirrel defender so this particular item is very useful in the garden if you have a bird feeder so if you put food out for the birds this particular thing is used to deter squirrels and prevent them from raiding the bird feeders so this particular thing is very useful in your garden however unfortunately mine was destroyed by the wind last weekend unfortunately so there it is the answer to today's mystery object the thing that got destroyed last week in my garden by the wind was a squirrel defender and this particular thing is used to deter squirrels the word deter very interesting word by the way if you deter someone it means discourage you discourage someone from doing something by instilling doubt or fear of the consequences so if you deter you discourage it can also mean prevent so if you want to prevent something from happening you can say deter oh i just had i just had some water so to deter someone is to discourage someone from doing something the other word that i mentioned there prevent prevent means to keep something from happening so very similar 
to the word deter. They are both used as verbs. So to keep something from happening or to stop someone from doing something, you prevent the squirrels from eating all the seeds. You deter the squirrels from raiding your bird feeder. So you can see those two words have very similar meanings, but they can be used in different ways. They can be used very differently. That's almost it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Hello, Helena. Hello, Yug Lee. Sometimes I can't get the comments either. Then I switch my smartphone off and then on again and it works. Thank you, Helena. Some some of you I've noticed are having difficulty leaving messages on the live chat. But I can assure you it's not my problem, so it isn't my fault. I hope you understand. Let's have a look outside before we go. A beautiful day. It isn't raining today. However, it is very windy. We haven't had any snow, even though the weather forecast said there might be some snow. But no, there is no snow today. No snow whatsoever. Thank you, Maria. Mr. Duncan, could you check why Palmyra can't send messages in the live chat? I really don't know why. I have no idea. I don't know why, why Palmyra can't send messages. I'm just checking to make sure that Palmyra isn't blocked. But I know that Palmyra isn't blocked. So I'm not sure why. I'm not sure. I don't know why Palmyra cannot send a message. I'm not really sure. Oh, wait there. I've just seen something. I think that asteroid is coming back. Whew, that was close. Did you see the asteroid that went past the Earth a couple of days ago? Very close to the Earth. 3,000 miles an hour it was moving at. Did you see it? <laughs> Somehow, I don't think so. Thank you very much to Patchu. Thank you very much to Yong Lee. Thank you, Sin Mai. Thank you also, Sweetness, for your lovely company today. So many people have been here today. And you can catch me on YouTube. I am here with you every Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, 2 p.m. UK time. So that means I will be back with you on Sunday. You can see me again live on YouTube on Sunday. And just in case you are wondering what the name of the asteroid is, it is called Apophis, Apophis, which apparently is named after the Greek god of chaos, the god of chaos, Apophis. And that was the giant asteroid that recently came past the Earth. Did you see it? Did you wave to it? Thank you, Geo10. Thank you also, Eric. Thank you, Haile Kwang, once again. A big hello to all my lovely new students in Vietnam. And also, hello to everyone who has joined me over the past couple of days. Thank you very much to Jean. Thank you also to Sin Mai. Very kind of you to say hello. I will try to find out why Palmyra cannot send messages. I will try to find out after I finish the live stream. First of all, Mr. Duncan, thank you for your good live English addict and see you on Sunday. I am back on Sunday. There is no Mr. Steve because he's doing lots of things at the moment. Mr. Steve is a very busy bee right now. He's doing all sorts of things. I will see you on Sunday, 2 p.m. UK time. Have a good weekend. Have a good time. Whatever you are doing today, Saturday or Sunday. Have a great time. Stay safe. And I really hope that you've enjoyed today's lesson. Oh, another thing. Don't forget also to like and subscribe. 
if you like my lessons if you like my videos don't forget to give me a big like and also you are more than welcome to subscribe to my channel as well that is it there is no more time to go thank you very much for your company i hope you've enjoyed this thank you wherever you are watching at the moment in the world 2 p.m uk time sunday i will be back here with you oh you can also check my website i suppose i should mention my website before i go here is the website and there is the address you can find all of my playlists all of my lovely videos are listed and you can even hear my lovely voice as well <laughs> i know not everyone thinks my voice is lovely i know not everyone likes my voice i understand but there is nothing i can do about it thank you helena thank you mog mog congratulations once again for being first on the live chat my toothache oh, one of my teeth is hurting I have a feeling that I might have to go to the dentist to have it fixed oh, dear I don't want to go to the dentist can you come with me can you please come with me and hold my hand because I'm afraid I don't want to go to the dentist because my my dentist the one that I used before has left he's gone and now there's a new dentist and I feel very afraid very scared <laughs> see you on Sunday 2 p.m. UK time and of course until the next time we meet here on YouTube you know what's coming next yes you do ta-ta for now